Welcome or welcome back, everyone. Today, here in Cuenca, Ecuador, once again, we are visiting the Museum of the History of Medicine, where we saw some barbaric dental equipment, some interesting other medical devices, and also learned a lot about the history of medicine. So here, just on the other side of the river there, across from the old historical center up on the hill there, right here across the river is El Museo de la Medicina. The Museum of Medicine, Museo de la Medicina. And uh, it seems to be open. The gates are open. So, Let's go in and check it out. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. I think this is sort of like a museum to the history of like medicine, I guess. I don't know if it's part of the university, the University of Cuenca is like attached right here. Um, I think this is actually like a hospital or like a health center or something that it's attached to. At least that's what it looked like on the map. But there's a sign right there on the side of the building that says Museo de la Historia de la Medicina. So it's a museum to the history of medicine. Let's go in and uh, check it out. Before we go in, there's actually some stuff out here that's part of the museum. 20th century something. It's a Swiss made, Ais Suiza, uh, utilized to monitor the quality of current electrical. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> My Spanish fails me. Look, if you guys have been watching any of these videos, you know that, like, I can understand Spanish okay, and if I take the time, I can sit and read and probably understand Spanish as well by reading it, but it would take a long time. And this video would be like an hour long. And to be perfectly honest, we don't have enough battery on the camera to do that. Looks like a vaporizer. Bunch of old medical equipment out here, sterilizer. See, I, I can, esterilizador de agua, water sterilizer. That I can read. Liquadora Industrial de Brazil. Preparation of uh, something. Interesting. Interesting. Another sterilizer. Autoclave. Oh, it's from Japan. Japan, this one. Autoclave for sterilizing stuff old uh what's this oh centrifuge okay centrifuge old surgical lights pretty cool surgical suction machine an electro something or other electrocytoscope cool lots of cool old looking medical equipment out here already which means inside there's probably going to be more. And I'm kind of interested to see it, honestly. Like, I like history, and I haven't ever seen, like, a history of medicine museum. So let's check it out. Here we are right inside, Museo de Historia de la Medicina. Some more medical equipment out here. It's in a really, really cool looking building. I mean, it's one of these old Spanish colonial style buildings with, like, the courtyard in the middle. Very, very cool. Most of the time you see places like this and like, like in the old historical center on the other side of the river, a building like this would all be like commercial stuff on the ground floor. They'd have like cafes and whatnot. Upstairs maybe they'd be like boarding houses where they're renting rooms like hostels or something like that. But here, they just made a museum. Like old medical equipment. I don't know if there's like a ticket price or something to enter. Doesn't seem like it. I just walked right in. And uh, I'm walking around filming, talking to myself like an idiot, like we always do. 
Nobody seemed to say anything to me. And there is all this medical equipment out here. And I can see in the room behind us, or behind this uh, shelf and whatnot, that there's more inside. Old dental equipment. A Yankee rotator. Yankee rotator de Estados Unidos. Now this is something I noticed um, in a lot of countries like Mexico specifically. They call uh, people from the United States, they call them gringos, right? But in Argentina, where we were, uh, and I think in some other countries too, they call them Yankees. Spelled Y-A-N-Q-U-I, Yankee. I noticed that in some of the comments on some of those videos from Argentina. People calling me a Yankee. I think it's pretty, pretty funny. There's a bunch of old, looks like medical supplies and medicine. Let's head in this room back here. Oh, the lights come on automatically when we come in. Wow, look at all this stuff. I like that they have, you know, the equipment preserved, but then they also have like old, you know, like dental fillings and white, SS white casting investment from the SS white dental manufacturing company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's pretty cool. I like seeing old stuff like this. It's kind of like, you know, digging through your grandma's basement or something, <laughs> finding a bunch of old stuff or like up in the attic. Alright, if you were old enough to have sat in a chair like this, if your butt sat right there and you got your teeth drilled, that fan blowing on you, you had to spit up all the blood and whatnot into that little sink, comment down below. Sterilizers, more sterilizers. 1970s, these ones. Oh, this is like one of the, like I think this is like one of these radiation sterilizers, right? You gotta like reach in with the gloves. Radiation is used actually a lot in medicine. A lot more than you would think to sterilize stuff and for like certain medical procedures. We got here another sterilizer, 1950s, Estados Unidos. Some uh, caricatures up here, different doctors. I would imagine important doctors, doctors who were important to this hospital or university, maybe. Pretty interesting. It's all dentist chairs in here, all these old dentist chairs. Now, here's what we do, we go through and we'll look at each of the dentist chairs and you can comment on, on uh, which one looks the most like the one that you got your teeth drilled when you were a little kid and then we'll know exactly how old you are in the comments alright so those will be number one number two number three four here. This one looks, I don't know, this one looks a little scarier than the rest of them. Number five. This one actually looks pretty comfortable. Number six. There's no uh, equipment on number six. Number seven. This one looks the most high-tech, right? 1957 from, oh, of course, this is why it looks high-tech. It's from Japan. 1957. Yoshida Dental. Place where you can spit, seat where you can sit your butt. Number eight, last but not least, number eight right here, also from Japan. 1950 J Morita Dental, 1950. 
yeah, gotta, I'm not gonna lie, the Japanese stuff, it, it's the coolest. <laughs> it's very high tech. I mean, for the time, of course, for like 1950. Although I don't know how much how much has uh, dental chair technology changed in the last half century. Probably not that much. Any dentists in the comments? Want to uh, want to let us know how much dental chair technology has changed in the last 75 years? <sighs> this bad boy. I think this is an X-ray. Looks like an x-ray machine. That's the thing they always point at the side of my face. Take x-rays of my teeth when I go to the dentist. Okay, this is the scary part. This is the, we're gonna use these to pull your teeth out part. Picks and, you know, look, I've, I've had, uh, Dental work, you know, cavities drilled. I got a root canal one time. Get drilled with like these things. You know what the worst thing is at the dentist? I gotta tell you, it's a aggressive hy. <laughs> it's an aggressive hygienist with one of these little picks, just really going at it, chewing up all the edges of your gums. Oof, makes me makes me shiver right now just thinking of it. If you're a dental hygienist out there and you're an aggressive dental hygienist. Chill, just just chill a little bit, will you please? Our gums can't take it. Oh no, here, this. This is number, what number are we on? Number nine, I guess. That one's pretty low tech. This one's extra low tech. We're getting very old here at this point. It's basically just, this thing where they put water in. Of course, here the Galeria Generacional de Odo Odontologos. 1935-23, I don't know. It's like a orthodontist or dentist gallery of a bunch of dentists. Look at all these dentists. Going all the way back from 1935 to 2023. Almost a hundred years of dentists. Oh look. You hear the teeth of a patient who didn't make it. And then they put his teeth here. <laughs> it is 1780 from France. Look at this. This is how they were doing dentistry in France in 1780. They just, uh, if you <laughs> something went wrong with your tooth, they just knock it out with one of these hammers. And then you'd, you'd look like that. You'd have, you know, 50% of your teeth. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah, it'd basically be this. Painless extraction. Oof. Okay. Well, that's enough of the uh, dentist chairs, I think. Look at this. This is nine. 19th century dental chair created in 1790. So this is like the 1800s. You'd sit in this thing with your teeth all messed up like that. They'd grab one of these little things. Oh, you know what? This isn't even a hammer. <laughs> this thing that looks like a hammer, that's the handle that the dentist holds onto. And they wrap that little hook thing around your tooth. And they just like do that. your tooth comes out and that's basically how you fix a, a cavity if your tooth hurts we just pull it out and they probably like stick a gold tooth in there or something or wooden teeth let's keep looking let's see if there's more around this museum there's got to be more right the dental room is terrifying let's try and find a less terrifying room some more stuff out here gastroscope, ultrasonic gastroscope. So they stick that thing down your throat or up the, you know, other end. Take a look at what's going on inside. Oxygen kit. There's more sterilizers. A 
blood analyzer from China from the uh, 2000s. That's pretty new. Another centrifuge here. Uh, oh, there's an iron lung over there. Look at this. See that? Iron lung. Go check that thing out. More lab equipment here. All this stuff is boring. We want to go look at that iron lung. This is the... Looks like there's a little boutique here, too. Is it possible we could buy, like, old electrical equipment? Oh, and of course, right along here with all of this is an old boombox. So, so you can listen to music while you're doing surgery. Or while you're having surgery done to you. Although if you're having surgery done to you, hopefully you're not conscious. Yeah, look at this iron lung. See inside it and everything. Emerson respirator. Wow. They just stick you in there. Sticky in this thing. Your head sticks out here. They seal the whole thing off. And then that thing breathes for you for the rest of your life. It sounds pretty rough, to be honest. It sounds pretty rough. I never knew. I don't think I ever knew anyone who was in an iron lung. Comment down below if you knew anybody who was ever in an iron lung. So in this next room, this, I think, is like a biography of this guy, Manuel Augustin Landevar Uyari, Ulai Uyauri. That one's tough to pronounce. Anyway, there's pictures of him up here. There's his, uh, looks like his, like, medical license from 1947 up there. There's a picture of him right there. And I think, from what I'm reading on this quite long biography in Spanish, I think, though, he is the founder of, like, the Society for the History, uh, the History of Medicine of Ecuador. So he's, like, the founder of this whole museum, I guess. There's a Society for the History of Ecuador and Medicine, and he founded it, and so maybe this museum is all because of him. bunch of old chemicals and chemicals and drugs and stuff antigens these are I think these aren't like drugs these are like lab chemicals right because this most of this stuff looks like lab testing stuff test tubes big boiling flasks and things that that it looks like uh, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman would cook meth in Yeah, this is all like lab testing stuff. There's some microscopes over here. Old microscopes, 1950s microscope, 1940s microscope. English, German. Uh, oh, Polish. There's a Polish one from 1950. Made in Poland. Very cool. Some more. Ooh. Straight razor action there. That one's pretty rusty. Wouldn't want to shave with that. Some more lab equipment, testing stuff. Okay, that's cool. We got some laboratory equipment in here. It's cool. It's not as cool as the dental equipment, but it's also not as terrifying. Anyway, let's uh, take a moment. Take a look at Manuel Agustin Landevar, uh, who apparently without, without whom this museum would not exist and we would not be able to come here and make a video about it. Anyway, let's go see if there's more rooms. All right, we found here the room of x-rays. And uh, 
not all the lights are working in here, so hopefully you'll be able to see everything on the video. But these are like x-ray machines from way, way back. Look at this thing. From Paris, from, I can't even see what year this is. 1928. Yo, x-ray technology, quite old. Quite old. Here's a newer one. This looks like it's from the, I don't know, 70s or 80s. Actually, this looks like it's from the 80s. There's no sign on this one. We're gonna guess it's from the 80s. This one, much older. Holy cow, look at this thing. MCS Phillips Metallics from New York from I don't know what year. Looks like it's from the 40s or 50s, that'd be my guess. Siemens, German company, 1895, look at that. Okay, sure doc, just stand up on here and we'll bombard you with radiation and then we'll see what your skeleton looks like. 1895, sure. Actually, that's pretty, <laughs> when you think about it, they had the technology in 1895 for you to stand on this thing and they'd bombard you with radiation and they'd be able to see what your skeleton looks like. But if you had a toothache, they would basically just like put you in that chair that we just saw in the dental room and yank it out with one of those ridiculous hooks. Look like a fucking meat hook. Ugh. Anyway, cool, cool equipment. The two nice uh, women outside here told me that there's more rooms upstairs. So let's go up there and see what's up there. This is the hall of Sala Protomedicos de Jose M. Alvear. Oh yeah, look at this. That lights come on automatically. Awesome. There's a lot of stuff in here. Oh. Hello. <laughs> lights come on, lights go off. I think the motion sensor <laughs> it only had the lights. It only let the lights go stay on for like 15 seconds and then turn them off. That's okay. There's enough sunlight in here that we can see all this stuff. Look at this terrifying thing. 1915 operating table. Yeah. Just lie on that thing. Start hacking you up. I mean, at least they had anesthesia. That was good. Before anesthesia, man, geez. Just here, drink drink a bunch of this whiskey. Get real hammered and we'll saw your leg off. Ugh. Respirometro from 1900. Someone's desk. Dr. Luis Maldonado. Luis Maldonado Cirujano. Anyway. Right there. That's where his famous butt was. It's always cool to see historical chairs. It's like uh, opening a window to the past to see where someone's butt was. Okay, the lights are definitely not turning on in here. Moving my arm around, trying to get the motion sensor to pick me up. All right, well, obviously we're standing in the dark. You can't see any of this stuff. I can barely see this stuff. And I don't know what any of it is, so we're gonna leave this room. Let's see what's down at the other end of the room here. What is all this stuff? Oh, it's like, uh, for blood pressure? No, that can't be for blood pressure. I don't know, weird tongs and surgical tools? I don't know. Terrifying old surgical tools. I was gonna say one of those had a squeezy bulb. You know, it looks like, like a, oh yeah, here, for blood pressure. A sphygmo manometer. That's right, big word, sphygmomanometer. If you don't know, 
that's the thing that they use to test your blood pressure. This thing right here. It's a sphygmomanometer. Got some, uh... Oh, here you go. <laughs> what does this remind you of from just a few years ago? Yep. Here it is. Objects for the prevention of, uh... Decontamination of the virus, the virus, which don't even have to say the name. We all know. We all know. Here's Dr. Rene Rene Aguirre, Aguirre Paredes, who. Here's some stuff of his. Wonder what happened to this guy. He died in 2020, and we are in the room with the stuff about El Virus. So, it's very possible. It's very possible that he was a victim of the virus, but who knows? I don't know, actually. What does it say here? Uh, doesn't say. Doesn't say. Well, Either way, rest in peace, Senor Doctor Rene Aguirre Paredes Virella. It's a chicken pox, I think. Picture a kid with chicken pox. I guess this whole thing is just for like virology. This is the virology room. And then back here, what do we got? Another old desk. The desk used from 1940 1966 by somebody? I don't know. Chair over there. Potentially famous butt. Sat there. Maybe this guy. Dr. Julio A. Tenorio. Maybe. Yeah, let's go with that. That was his chair. That's where his butt was. Some uh, more medical equipment here. Ooh. Old uh, anatomy book. I remember taking anatomy and learning all of these things. Probably forgetting it. I don't remember any of that stuff. Bunch of pictures of famous. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Fa so this will be like famous figures in the history of medicine. There's Hippocrates, who they named the oath after that all the doctors take. Do no harm and such. Who else do we recognize here? Le Leuven Hook. Oh, Runchen. So this dude, they name uh, the, the grades, the degrees on a... Uh, on a a Geiger counter, I think, or no, like, yeah, 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 like, like how how radioactive something is, is Rungens. It's like the uh, the degrees of measurement of radioactivity. Can you imagine? <laughs> you you work your whole life, you do all this like, you do all this, uh, you know, research and whatnot, and then they name that after you. And basically, like, <laughs> the more of you that there are, the deadlier it is. Ah, there's La Universidad Johns Hopkins out in Baltimore, Maryland, United States. Hmm, okay, it's cool. There's probably some more here that I know that I'm missing, and it's a lot more that I don't know about, but uh, very cool. Looks like an old I don't even know. Some sort of old libro de control de asistencia de los alumnos de medicina. Okay, so it's like a record book of medical students. What's in here? A distiller? Okay, cool. An 
old distiller from the 19th century. Parto de electro choque. Oh, wait. A parto de electro choque. This is an electroshock therapy machine in the United States from 1940. Man. You talk about like old dental procedures being like super barbaric. So it was like mental health stuff. My God, this is like you feel a little bit depressed or something. You know, you're just not having a really good time. Kind of depressed, and they're just like, okay, we're just gonna put these electrodes on you and run electricity through your brain, and that'll make you feel better, right? That always makes everybody feel better. Jeez. Here we go. An Atari computer from Taiwan, 1985 to 1987. Atari. Comment down below if you're old enough to remember Atari. An incubator for little babies. Oh, I think these are, yeah, that makes me think that this is an OBGYN chair. This one too. The uh, stirrups. Yeah, stirrups. And the seat there for the doctor. That's where babies are born. You want to know where babies come from? Right there. Well. I think we've seen everything that there is to see in this museum. So I'm glad we came. Uh, I'm glad we came to this one. I'm glad we visited it. But uh, unfortunately, the battery on our camera is about to run out. So I think this will probably be it for this museum. And uh, I think we're going to call it here for the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it with the uh, all the old equipment from the 1985 Atari computer all the way back to the horrifically bar barbaric <laughs> dental equipment. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, but I think that'll be it for the video. We're going to call it here. So uh, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more from here in Cuenca, Ecuador. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.